Welcome to Chemistry at York. This open educational resource is a joint production of the Department of Chemistry at York College and the Department of Natural Sciences at LaGuardia Community College of the City University of New York. This is the second in a series of videos on atomic theory and is entitled Atomic Structures and Symbols. My name is Emmanuel Chang and today we're going to learn some chemistry. Hi, my name is Kelly. I like to cook and martial arts. Hi, my name is Vimal and I like video games. Hi, my name is Tessa and I like carbon reactions. Hi, my name is Simon. I like rock music. Um, hi, my name is Dayala Ibrahim. I like working out and also playing sports. In the last lecture, Atomic Theory Number 1, we learned that all matter is made up of exceedingly small particles called atoms. And we learned that atoms are, in some sense, indivisible. In other words, if you have an atom of, for example, iron, you cannot divide that atom any further and still have the substance that's called iron. However, atoms themselves are made up of smaller particles, in fact, three types of smaller particles, which in totality we call subatomic particles. These subatomic particles are called protons, neutrons, and electrons. We can divide atoms into two basic parts. The first is called the nucleus and is represented by this red dot over here. The nucleus is in the center of the atom and is composed of protons and neutrons. The second part, or the rest of the atom, is composed of the electrons. And so, as you can see here, the electrons is represented by um, this cloud with these E minus uh, labels, sits around the nucleus and takes up the vast majority of the volume of the nucleus. Uh, of the atom. If you remember your scientific notation um, and your exponents, then you'll remember that a negative exponent, negative 15, is 100,000 times bigger than this negative exponent, negative 10. So this figure is not really to scale. <clears throat> um, if it was, the nucleus would actually be something like a pinhead and the electron cloud would maybe be the size of your entire screen. So these subatomic particles have particular properties and the properties that we usually think about are, you know, besides their name and location, which we already mentioned, the charge and the mass. As you can see in this column, electrons have a negative charge, protons have a positive charge, and neutrons have no charge. Electrons and protons have the same charge, um, except for the opposite sign, with a magnitude of 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs C. This is a rather inconvenient number uh, to use. And so in chemistry, we often use, almost always use, unit charge instead of the coulombic charge. And we assign, assign a charge of negative one to electrons and positive one to protons, still zero for neutrons. In terms of their mass, protons um, and neutrons have a very similar mass if we look at the mass in grams, 1.67 some odd times 10 to the negative 24th grams while electrons have a much, much smaller mass, 0 0.00091 times 10 to the negative 24th. So this is more than a thousand times smaller than the mass of a proton or a neutron. And so, like we did with charge, masses in chemistry are also often simplified. And so we say a neutron and proton have masses in 
AMU, or atomic mass units, of approximately one. You can see the exact values here. And electrons have masses in atomic mass units of this very small decimal here, 0 0.00055. However, we often simplify even further. And so we get this table over here, which is much smaller. And these are, in terms of the masses, approximate but very, very useful. Um, and these are the approximations that we will use most of the time. So a proton has a unit mass in AMU of one and a unit charge of plus one. A neutron has a unit mass of one and a unit charge of zero. Remember in the previous slide, we had 1.00 and some decimal after. We approximate them to one, one. And remember the electrons were tiny. There, there was only a number in the fourth decimal place, so we approximate that to zero. As compared to a proton and neutron, an electron is virtually massless. So we say an electron has a unit mass of zero and a unit charge of negative one. Using these values, we can define some further properties of atoms. The atomic number, which we abbreviate as Z, is simply equal to the number of protons. Each element has a characteristic atomic number, a characteristic Z. In other words, the identity of an element is established by the number of protons it has. An atom is an atom of hydrogen if it has one proton. An atom is an atom of carbon if it has six protons. Then we define this second value, mass number, abbreviated A, as the sum of the protons and the sum of the neutrons. And we get this because the unit mass of the proton is one, the unit mass of the neutron is zero. So we add them together and we get the total mass of the atom. Remember the unit mass of the electron is essentially zero. And so it doesn't matter how many electrons you have, they, the electrons do not contribute appreciably to the mass of the atom. Now in chemistry, as in life, we often use abbreviations. So atoms are often written in an abbreviation with the following form. X, which corresponds to the atomic symbol. The atomic symbol is an abbreviation uh, that's taken from the periodic table used to represent an atom of a particular element. So the, if you look at your periodic table, you'll see that the abbreviation for hydrogen is H. The abbreviation for helium is HE. And we'll learn about this further in the, our lecture video on the periodic table. On the upper superscript side over here, we, we have the mass number, number of protons plus neutrons, and on the subscript side over here, we have the atomic number, which is the, no the number of protons. And so if we have an atom here that has six protons represented by this plus, six neutrons represented by this white sphere, and six electrons represented by these blue minus uh, spheres, then we will have Z, an atomic number, the number of protons equal to six, A, the mass number, equal to the sum of the protons and the neutrons, six plus six is 12. Before we put this all together, we're going to take a quick look at chemical symbols. So a chemical symbol, as we mentioned, is an abbreviation used to indicate an element or an atom of an element. Some symbols are derived from the common name of the element. For example, hydrogen, as we mentioned, is H, and helium is HE, lithium is LI. Others are abbreviations 
of the name in another language. For example, iron is Fe, which comes from the Latin ferrum, ferrum, sorry, <clears throat> and lead is abbreviated as Pb, which is also comes from the Latin plumbum for lead. Most symbols have one or two letters. Only the first letter of a chemical symbol is capitalized. And the chemical symbols, um, in order to, if you want to find them, you refer to the periodic table. Here is a periodic table. And so if you recall, when we were putting together our atom with six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons, um, well, we found an atomic number equal to six. So on the periodic table, the atomic number is um, the basis of the arrangement of all the elements. So you have hydrogen with an atomic number of one, helium two, lithium three, four, and so on. And so atomic number of six or six protons tells us that we have carbon. And carbon has a symbol C. So now we have all the information we need in order to put together our abbreviation here. We have our mass number, A, we have our atomic number, Z, and we have the symbol from the periodic table. So when we put that together, we get C for carbon, we get 12 for the mass number, and six for the atomic number. And we could say this 12 C6, or alternatively, carbon 12. So to review, the atomic number Z represents the number of protons in the nucleus. And the value of Z, or in other words, the number of protons, determines the identity of the element, what kind of atom it is. And you can find Z on the periodic table. The mass number A is the second value we're interested in, which is the total number of protons and neutrons in an atom. And it's called the mass number because the mass of the atom resides almost entirely in the protons and in the neutrons, not the electrons. Okay, so we have an element. We don't know what the element is just yet, but the element has an atom that has eight protons, eight neutrons, and eight electrons. And we want to find the atomic number, the mass number, and the full chemical symbol. Um, Tessa, how about you? Well, the atomic number is going to be eight because it has eight protons, and the atomic number is the same as the proton number. Eight. The mass number is the sum of neutrons and the sum of protons. So we're going to add the number of protons and the number of neutrons, and that's going to get, get us the mass number which is 16. Now, to find the symbol, we, we go ahead and we look at the periodic table. And we see that the element that has eight protons, it's oxygen. OK, so now let's try another one. We have an element that has an atom, has 17 protons, 19 neutrons, and 17 electrons. Um, Dai, how about you try this one? Um, as we can see, protons is the same thing as atomic number. So since we have 17 protons here, the atomic number should also be 17. Um, also for neutrons, um, we have protons and neutrons here, right? In order to find the mass number, we would have to add both of these together, protons and neutrons. And if we add 19 plus 7, that should give us a total of 36. Um, last but not least, since we have the mass number of 36, we can find the symbol. By looking at the periodic table, we see that krypton has a mass number of 36, so therefore our symbol or element should be krypton. And we finish it off, 17, 36 mass number. And this is the symbol to represent krypton. Okay, so what do we, uh, what do we think of that, students? I don't think that one's correct. Do <clears throat> you want to try to adjust it? Here you go.
so I think we should be, he used a mass number, which is not correct. I think we should use the atomic number, which is to find the symbol, right? So number 17 should be chlorine, right? That's too small. And then when you put the numbers, the atomic number, it goes on the bottom and the mass number on top. So that's how it should have been. So now what do we think? Do we like that a little better? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Okay, so let's do this in the opposite direction. <clears throat> let's give you the chemical symbol and see if we can fill in everything else. So we'll, we're going to give you a chemical symbol. 33P. <clears throat> and we're going to fill in the atomic number here, the mass number, Protons, neutrons, and electrons. Uh, Kelly, how about you? Sure. Okay. So, as we can see the symbol, it's P, and it has a, a mass number of 33. From the periodic table, we can see that P has a number of atomic number of 15, which I'm going to write it on the bottom left. So the atomic number will be 15. The na mass number will be 33 because it's on the top left. The number of protons and the atomic number are the same, so the protons will be 15. Electrons, since it doesn't have a, it, the symbol, I mean this element doesn't have any charge, will be the same as the number of protons, which is 15. The neutrons will be 15 plus 33, which will be the 48. Thank you. So, <clears throat> what do we think about that? Maybe a problem here? Simon, how about you? <coughs> sure. Where's the problem? The problem is the uh, neutrons. So we know that the number of protons plus the number of neutrons will give us the mass number. But there's a problem here. We have a lot of neutrons here. If I were to take 48 plus 15, we would get a number larger than that mass number. So I think what should be done is we should find the difference in order to find the number of neutrons. Mm -hmm. So if I were to take the mass number of 33 and minus that by the atomic number of 15, I should get a number of not 48, but 18. <coughs> what do we think? I think that's the right thing. Makes sense. Oh, that makes Good. Sense. Okay, so now we want to introduce a new concept, the concept of isotopes. Remember, Z, the atomic number, which is the number of protons, defines the identity of an element. What you may not realize yet is that that statement implies as long as the number of protons doesn't change, the number of neutrons can change and you still have the same element because the atomic number defines the identity of an element. So an element can have atoms with different numbers of neutrons. These have different mass numbers A and are called isotopes. And so we just constructed this atomic uh, symbol and this abbreviation over here, 12C6. But what if we changed the number of neutrons from six to seven? This is still an atom of carbon because the identity of the element or the identity of the atom of the element is defined by the number of protons. The number of protons is still six. The number of neutrons changed. So what changed? Z does not change, but A changes. The mass number changes. So if the mass number changes, how does this abbreviation change up here? It changes like this. And so now we have 13 C6 because we have six protons, seven neutrons, 
and the mass number of 13. We could also call this carbon 13. And we would say that carbon 12 and carbon 13 are isotopes of carbon. Okay, so let's uh, look at an example of some isotopes. Let's see if we can do this ourselves. So regular hydrogen um, has one proton, zero neutrons, and one electron. And we write the symbol as H for hydrogen, one for the atomic number, the number of protons, and one for the mass number, right? because the mass number is protons plus zero, plus neutrons, which is zero. One plus zero gives us one. So can we think of uh, maybe another isotope of hydrogen? How could we develop the same kind of uh, uh, numbering scheme for another isotope of hydrogen? Uh, Simon, how about you? Uh, I'll put two here, zero, two electrons, and then that would be two, and that would be two. Okay, so what do we think about that? Uh, I, I, think, I think, think that's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so who wants to, who wants to, I'll fix it. Okay, so, um, go. Knowing that hydrogen has one proton, um, it stays consistent because elements, um, once you change the number of protons, they become a totally different element. So in this case, we will have one proton. Um, what changes the mass number would be proton plus neutron. So if we want an isotope that changes the mass number, we would have to change the neutron. Originally, we have zero neutrons. We can try one. And electron is always equal to proton if there's no charge on the atom. So we'll keep this one. So up here, if we add one proton plus one neutron, this stays correct, actually. It'll be two. Um, actually, no. This stays correct because this is the mass number. For proton, proton never changes, so it's going to be one. Okay, could you think of another one? Um, another isotope? Yes, I can. So, again, protons never change because if we change protons, we would be introducing another element. So, we keep it as one. We can possibly change neutrons to two this time. And electrons would be one also because there's no charge on the hydrogen atom. So we're going to keep this at one. So now if we add it two plus one, because protons plus neutrons give us mass number, that will give us three. And protons never change, so that would be one. Great, thanks. No problem. <clears throat> so in actuality, uh, hydrogen does have three such common isotopes. The most common one is hydrogen 1. Um, somewhat less common is hydrogen 2, which has the common name of deuterium. And then hydrogen 3 um, is radioactive, and it's called tritium. Sometimes an atom can gain or lose electrons. In this case, the identity of the element is still defined by the number of protons or by the uh, atomic number. So let's say we have carbon that has gained one electron, and so it has seven electrons now. Now, we haven't really talked very much about charge, now we have six protons. Each proton has a charge of plus or plus one and seven electrons, each with a charge of minus or minus one. And so the atomic number has not changed. The mass number has not changed because the electrons do not affect the mass number, but there is a net charge. Previously, we had six plus charges and six minus charges. 
and those balance each other out. Plus six and minus six adds up to zero. However, now we have plus six and minus seven. And so if we have plus six for our protons, minus seven for our, our electrons, we have an overall charge of minus one. And so we say we have an ion of carbon. That minus one net charge now goes on the upper right hand side of our atomic abbreviation, the superscript on the right, and we get 12C6 minus one. In general, ions with a positive charge are called cations, and ions with a negative charge are called anions. Cations are formed from the loss of electrons, and anions are formed from the gain of electrons. Okay, so now we got charges. <clears throat> um, so let's try this one. Uh, ion, 55, 2 plus. Number of protons, number of neutrons, number of electrons. Who wants to give it a try? All right, Tessa, give it a try. So the number of protons is going to be 26. We can find it just by looking at the periodic table. The number of neutrons is going to be mass number minus 26 will give us 29. Now, since it's not a neutral atom, it's not going to be the number of um, electrons is not going to be the same number as uh, same as the number of protons because it's not a neutral atom. It has a charge of two plus. So that means that it must be two more two more electrons. So 28. Okay. So what do we think of that? Yeah, I don't I don't think that's quite right. No. Okay. Yeah. So confusion. All right. So let's see. If we can fix our sure. confusion. All right. Since iron, it has a positive charge, we will call it cation, it's a cation, and a positive charge is basically losing an electron. So instead of gaining two electrons, you're actually losing two electrons. So, and so that would be 26 minus two electrons, that will give you a total of 24 electrons. <coughs> Do we like that? Uh, do we like yeah, that better? That makes more sense. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so let's do another example where we're working backwards. We have now the protons, neutrons, and electrons. Let's see if we can create the atomic symbol with the charge. Uh, any takers? Okay. All right, Jamal. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So from what we know already, the protons should be the same as the atomic number. And the one with 16 protons on the periodic table is sulfur. So sulfur is symbol is S and the atomic number is 16. Now first to get the mass number, it's the number of protons plus neutrons. So 16 plus 18 would give us 34. Now uh, in a neutral atom, this would have the same uh, protons and electrons. But since they don't have the same protons and electrons, we know that this one is a charged atom. So how do we know what charge it is? It's that this one has 16 protons and it has two more electrons. Two more electrons mean it has a two minus charge, or two more negative charges, in a sense. So that should be the final symbol. What do we think of that? Yeah, yeah. that's yep. yeah. good. Great. To summarize, in this lecture, we learned about the components of atoms, protons, neutrons, and electrons. We learned about atomic number and mass number, and how to calculate them. And we learned about writing atomic symbols using atomic number, mass number, as well as charge for ions. Thank you all for watching.